Welcome back to the Mountain Morning Show. We're in my favorite place in the entire studio, and Mine it's right too. here behind the stove with Lindsay Hargett from LK Cooking. This morning, we're going to do the dinner part first, right? Yes. Save breakfast for last. Mm -hmm. Best for last. Breakfast is yes, exactly. Best for last. <laughs> Get the healthy stuff first. Yes. Okay. So right now. We are cooking a sweet potato chicken corn chowder. Yes, it's okay. a mouthful, it's, but it's, it's really good. The triple C. Yes. Wait. All of the good sweet stuff. Sweet potato is not a C. It doesn't no, but count. chicken corn Never chowder. Mind. Never mind. There's still three C's. <laughs> You're on something. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so tell me what you've done. I see sweet potatoes. I see onions. I see some herbs. Tell me what's in mm -hmm. this pot. So I've kind of got like an aromatic broth going here with some, you know, like you said, some garlic, some um, onions, and some herbs and stuff. And then I've got a nice broth in there, and we've softened the sweet potatoes up. Mm -hmm. And then I've cooked this chicken beforehand because that kind of makes it so it doesn't toughen up in the soup. Did you just get breast and dice it up? Uh, yes, I did. So oh. just super easy. Just kind of seasoned it with some of this Redmond, um, just the salt and the garlic salt as well, and just gave it kind of a nice flavor profile to add to this. And then... Quick question. When you softened the sweet potatoes, did you just do it in the broth or did mm -hmm. you bake them? Nope, I just did it in the broth. So I just kind of dumped everything in there and let it all kind of soften up together and now it's ready to go, ready for the rest. How long did it take to soften up? Mm, 10 minutes maybe. It didn't really? Take very That's long. it? Mm -hmm. As long, it depends on how big you cut your sweet potatoes. Okay. So I do them like bite size and they cook really fast. Awesome. Well, it smells right. delicious. What happens next? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to add this chicken and the corn in. So okay. if you want to do. Just dump it in. Yes. Here, and I'll grab this the corn. This looks like a lot of stuff it for, is gonna be, for very little broth. Yes. So we're going for a chowder, not okay. a soup. So. We're gonna make it really thick so it's a nice hearty soup. Cause kind of what we're going for today is, you know, everybody's got these New Year's resolutions. I see all these people doing these new diets and stuff like that. And um, I feel like what's really important is like getting your food, the nutrients or your body, that is the nutrients that it needs. And then as long as you're, you know, filling it up with all the things that it needs, mm -hmm. you know, you're okay to, you know, have dessert like later like we're gonna have and yes. you know, things like that. And it's okay to add different things in your diet as long as, you know, your body's getting what it needs. So we've got good sweet potatoes in here, you know, Know, corn is good for you. Some protein. Yes, you can use bone broth in here. Um, there are variations to make this. You know, we've got it gluten free today. You can make it dairy free. You know, depending on like dietary restrictions. Mm -hmm. But really, it's just kind of naturally healthy and it's comfort food. It really you know? is. I I just want to be comforted by this soup. Mm -hmm. And that's like the big thing it's about. Chowder. Yes, that's the big thing about diets. Is you know, food is a total comfort for me. And if you take that away and like make me eat healthy food, I get sad. <laughs> My poor husband. If we ever eat healthy, I'm like, I need a cupcake. You get hangry. So, hangry. Yes, totally hangry. So was this corn frozen? Uh, yes, I just use frozen corn. Way better for you than canned corn. You can kind of keep it on in your freezer for forever, mm -hmm. and you know, it's just automatically cooked right away. So. I'm liking the looks of this. What did mm -hmm. you use for your broth? So I use some bone broth because I make a bunch all the time. And then also with the bone broth, you can use like the fat that comes on top of it. Once mm -hmm. you make bone broth, it kind of settles on the top. So you can saute your vegetables and that at the Ooh, beginning. So it's yes. just really, like I said, not like super, super, super clean, healthy for you, but it has lots of good stuff in there. That it's is the just, good kinds of fats. Exactly. It's the good fat, the good broth, the good vegetables and things like that. So it may be hearty, but it's still, it's still good for you, but without like, I'm eating a kale salad. You know what I mean? Yes. All right. So we so. have bone broth, we have chicken, sweet potatoes, onions, corn, herbs. Mm -hmm. What else do we need to add? So we're going to thicken this up now. So like okay. I said, we're doing it gluten free today. Um, I've got just some gluten free all purpose flour, but mm -hmm. you can use regular flour. Um, you could do like an arrowroot or a cornstarch slurry if you want to do another version of gluten free. Good options. Yes, tons of different things. You can totally fit. So, so we're also going to do, yes, we're going to do half and half. You can do like, I know Redmond has raw milk that's really good if you want some good milk, mm -hmm. or you can do um, coconut milk even too. Tell me your measurements. So that was a quarter cup of flour, and then we've got about two cups of half and half here. And then we're not holding back. No, it is, no like I said, it is going to be still good comfort food. And we so. just kind of mix this guy up. Uh -huh. So we're just going to kind of stir that together, make sure you get all the flour at the bottom, and that's going to kind of thicken it. Mm -hmm. And you know, we'll and give make that it creamy as well. Yes, exactly. Give it that creaminess instead of just a broth based soup. So we're going to thicken it up, and then by the end of our segment, we're going to be able to eat this like rich soup, and it's just going to be so good. Oh, it smells delicious. And really, the key you know, flavoring in this, because I don't add a lot of, you know, there's a little bit of thyme in there and then some onions and some garlic, but I use this, um, the Redmond natural salt that they just mine, it's totally unrefined, and I use their garlic salt as well to kind of add a little extra push in. in there. Yes, ready to go. Slowly or just dump? Go for it. Just go for it. Mm -hmm. So how long 
start to finish does it take to make mm, this chowder? I would say, I mean, you gotta include like chopping time and stuff, because obviously, you I know, unless you're, yeah, we'll just stir it in there. in there. So, nobody saw that. <laughs> <laughs> nobody saw that. Um, so really start to finish, I would say maybe 45 minutes, you know, you know, with chopping time, like realistic 45 minutes. If okay. you're like hanging out in the kitchen, letting it simmer 45 minutes. How long do you want it to simmer for you to eat? Mm, you don't want it to go too long because you don't want the sweet potatoes to be mush. Baby food? Yes, yeah. exactly. So we don't want a mushy chowder, but so yeah, you can let it simmer for, you know, we're gonna let it simmer for another five, six, you know, up to 10 minutes so that it's all nice and thickened. Cool. Then it'll be ready to eat. Then we're gonna have a tasting segment, of course. Mm -hmm. the That's best the best part. part. <laughs> so Lindsay, real fast, tell me a little bit more about you. What are you doing new this year? Okay, so I'm doing, we kind of teased this in our last month's segment, mm -hmm. but I'm gonna do um, adult cooking classes. I haven't set the date for this month, but I promise it's going to happen. <laughs> Where and, do you announce? Where do you announce the dates? Um, on my Instagram. They okay. are on my website as well, but my, in, my website isn't as, you know, active, I guess. So um, my Instagram at LK Cooking on Instagram, you know, will always tell my updates and stuff. I do have my, I do a kids cooking class every month. It's mm -hmm. my cookie of the month class and they're super fun. That is on, goodness, I can't remember, the 26th or the 27th, whatever the Saturday is okay. um, in January. And, you know, it's really inexpensive. I just want people to be able to bring their kids and come kind of learn some baking basics and go home with some cookies, which is the best part. How do you sign up for these classes? So I have just a link in my profile on Instagram, and there's also sign-up links on my website at cool. lkcooking.com. And, you know, they're super easy to sign up for, super inexpensive, and they're really fun. Like, I do these cookie classes every month, and they, they're just so much fun. The kids come in and they, you know, throw all the ingredients in and they're eating the cookies and they're trying to feed my dog and it's, it's great <laughs> times. Trying to feed the dog. Yes, they're like, here she wants cookies too. I'm like, don't feed her. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know that you've done cooking classes for kids I mean, mm -hmm. for a while now. The adult classes, this is new, yes. right? This so is a I've done this year. Mm -hmm. So I've done them, you know, sporadically all over the place, but, you know, kind of my, one of my goals this year was to do them every single month. Right. And because kids are kind of easy to, you know, tell them what to do and stuff. So I wanted to get adults in the kitchen more and this is the same as the kids' cookie classes. I'm making them really inexpensive. It's going to be hands-on food. Um, this month, we're going to do slow cooker meals. And so you're oh, going to go home with a slow cooker meal in a bag so that you can put it Love in the that. freezer or, you know, take it home and cook it the next day. And, you know, as always, the best part is eating. So I'm going to have the meal ready to eat. So we're going to sample. I love treats. There will probably be treats, too. <laughs> so it's just going to be a big, fun food party. Well, you hook so. it up for your cooking classes. Yes. I will right, well, head over to our Instagram to sign up for these cooking classes. In the meantime, and we're gonna let this boy simmer mm -hmm. for what 10 more minutes yeah and then we're gonna taste it we're gonna eat lots of more things including some healthy chocolate chip muffins yes. I'm excited about that dinner and breakfast yes perfect day for me and since they're double chocolate it's really like a dessert too it but is. since they're healthy it it's also you could eat it for breakfast so it's a win-win really you eat it all day exactly <laughs> and I probably will well Lindsay thank you so much I always love putting together a meal with you you make it so simple mm -hmm. it makes it so that you think that the soup can be done in three minutes yes so exactly it's like look how easy it is but like I said realistically <laughs> chopping, we talk about it too chopping, 45 minutes <laughs> yes lovely all right well we are going to go to break let this simmer we're going to come back with a lot more right here here on the Mountain Morning Show. Welcome back to the Mountain Morning Show. As you can see, we are back on the kitchen set and the LK yes. is in the house and we have to get immediately to, yes, to brownies. These, yes, double chocolate muffins, even right. better. So like brownie and muffin form. So right. we've got all of these, like I said, kind of cleaner, but still delicious and good for you food. So we're doing some honey. It's like a mix of healthy and normal, I guess you could say. So we've got some honey, we've got some granulated sugar, um, we've got some applesauce and Greek yogurt instead of you know regular fats. We've got two egg whites instead of a whole egg um, and then we've got applesauce yes the applesauce is kind of a good fat in there and it kind of takes up some of the not a good fat sorry I mean the oil instead of doing like a canola oil or something it's so a lot better for you in your moisture mm -hmm, totally so wet ingredients in first yes we've got this Greek yogurt and then we're gonna do we've got a mixture of whole wheat and white flour so like I said kind of half and half half good half just fantastic normal. as you guys make dessert I'm gonna Yes, yeah, start uh, getting dinner boy. ready. Start totally. Yep, and I'll get some of this vanilla in there. And uh, really, we've just got lots of good stuff going on here. And we're going to mix them vanilla, all up. Yes, right? yes. I made this vanilla just last night. Oh, so lovely. I'm going to start stirring it. 
All right, we've got the cocoa and cocoa then some chocolate chips, which are the you know the best part of all of this. Where are you going to share this recipe? So this recipe will be on my website under the recipes tab at lkcooking.com. Um, I've got the chowder recipe up there as well, and you know they're just super easy. Like you can see with this one, you don't even need a mixer, you don't even need extra tools. We've just got it all ready to go here, and as soon as we've got it mixed up, we'll do some chocolate chips, and and we can start trying some of this yes, chowder Terry, too. Okay. Do you have any objections to trying this? I don't. I'm in transition to veg, but I'm not fully there yet. So <laughs> You can skip the chicken chunk. Bon appetit. I'm excited I'm so, about this. I'm so excited to taste it. So how it. long did this simmer for before you're ready to eat it? Honestly, it probably simmered for like six minutes. It thickens mm. up really fast. Um, and it doesn't need mm. to be super thick either, but it is, it's nice and creamy. Wow, huh? it tastes cheesy, but there's not even cheese in there. I know, it's so good. I Why? think it's that, it's that, you know, the flour and the sweet potato, and I do have cheese over there if you want to add some to it. But like you said, it's just kind of good. So you can make it dairy-free super easy mm -hmm. and, you know, you don't even need that cheese flavor because mm. it's already in there. Just really rich. So with the muffins, or mm -hmm. brownies, whatever we're calling them, dessert, <laughs> breakfast, everything. They're they're yes. they're one <laughs> a jack of all trades. Mm -hmm. How long you do you cook those it? In. Or um, bake it? Let's see, I probably baked these for, that's on my instructions, but 15 to 20 minutes is about the range, so you just wait until they're, you know, set Lovely. and everything, so these would be good to go. I like to top them with some extra chocolate chips because they look really pretty. They're like a bakery style muffin and it gives you that like extra chocolate on your palate. Oh, fantastic. Oh this is All the right, best part. I have about 30 seconds to take a bite. I'm really excited. That's right. I'm going right straight in. Too. Yes. Oh, my, I'm sorry, Lindsay. I have to test I don't too. Want you to <laughs> mm. Gotta get my chocolate fix for the morning. Wow. Mmm. This is brownie in a muffy form. Mm-hmm. That's breakfast. Lindsay, thank you so much for joining us. Done. Thanks for having me. Bring thank me you guys back. for joining us. <laughs> we'll be back tomorrow morning on the Mountain Morning Show from 7 to 9 and then again from noon to 2. Have a great day.